we've been outside with uh, Police Officer Fiona to see the place where we can go to assemble, to discuss with each other what we're going to do and everything. It's the drop-off, it's public, it's where the cars are dropping people off at Terminal 1 and Terminal 3. People are passing um, and there's a whole area there where we can now go as a group and have our discussion about what we do next. Now, we recommend that now, because uh, we've had, even though it's a small victory, we know that we're having lots of small victories at the yeah, moment, yeah. like in Leeds, like the hall being withdrawn from a harbour. All of these things are victories for us. Not one big one. Lots and lots of small ones on a daily basis. And they small make a victory, much bigger victory altogether. Big victory. Yeah. So we would like to recommend now, that we think it's been a wonderful yeah. turnout. Mm -hmm. And, we'll and our friends here and our comrades who've not been able to go are going to get the money back so that that will give them more money to fight another day. Yeah. And it's a difficult situation whereby you want a voice, you want to say what you want to say, and you want to say it in public, and I understand that. Thank you for coming outside so that it allows the airport to operate as it is. Whilst we are outside, if I could just ask that you leave a thoroughfare through so anybody going about the business can do. I've spoken to the Jet2 manager who has confirmed that the letters that were discussed with some of you is currently being printed, and they will bring that out in due course. Uh, you have given me a time scale within the next 20 minutes or so. Hopefully that will be a day or two. So, again, thank you for your patience. Thank you for coming outside here. If there's anything further, then one of my officers, if you need to approach them, by all means. Our aim is basically to facilitate your demonstration, as is your lawful right. But I must remind you that it is private property ultimately, and the airport also have rights to walk with that. OK, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the sound of helicopters above Gaza, <laughs> which drop white phosphorus on people. Friends, I want to talk about something practical. Something practical. Um, there's a campaign across the UK, and some of us here are involved in it, Dick Terry myself, against a racist organisation called the Jewish National Fund. Now David Cameron, Nick Clegg, <laughs> Millie, Millie somebody, <laughs> Millie Pete, they've all dumped the GNF, and that is really significant. The GNF always had three out of three party leaders, and it's unprecedented they've now got zero out of three. They are vulnerable, They're vulnerable as never before, and they are a fundamental pillar of Israeli apartheid. They're not chicken feet, they're major. They are major players in the dispossession of Palestine and they are registered in Britain as a charity. Now, they've organised stretch limo fundraisers in Hilton's around Britain for, a, for quite some time. They've now all been stopped by protests. They organised a golf fundraiser in Scotland. It's been stopped by years of protests. On the 11th of May, they're organising, wait for it, they're organising a charity shoot. <laughs> they're going to shoot things <laughs> to raise money for the JNF to dispossess the people of Palestine and that dispossession is enforced by Israeli thugs with guns. It's a provocation to everybody here. It's a provocation to decent people. And the UK, this is not a Scottish parochial thing, the UK Stop the JNF campaign is asking you to march on the Zionist guns near Glasgow on the 11th of May. It's a Friday. We're going to demonstrate. We're going to march on to the estate. We're going to make sure this does not proceed. And we ask you to come and bring many people. We'll take care of accommodation. And I don't mean in prison cells. <laughs> we'll take care of accommodation. The same night there's a fundraiser for Plant a Tree in Palestine, which tries to plant, which does plant trees where settlers burn them and Israelis burn them and the Israeli military destroys them. That's a fundraiser for Plant a Tree. On the Saturday in Edinburgh, 
there is a conference that's really important on how to fight the GNF, how to drive a stake through their heart, how to bring this dirty organisation. For 111 years, a British Prime Minister has always been a patron, until now. So I ask you please, talk to Dick there, guy in the red, talk to Terry, get your tickets, get bunches of tickets, and please come up and join the struggle against the GNF. We can put an end to them now. Okay, today is the, the year uh, anniversary of the death of Victoria Aragoni, who was uh, a, a wonderful friend and a wonderful guy, as well as being uh, one of the most active and courageous international supporters of Palestine. Um, he was killed a year ago. He was kidnapped, um, and the world has presented it so far as only violent uh, Islamic extremists in Gaza. Um, however, there is a lot of things that have not been revealed yet about what has happened there. There is a court case still ongoing. Uh, there is definite outside interference. We don't know who from exactly as to what, what it's about. We're still waiting on uh, any kind of conclusions on this. Um, Vic was a, a real mountain of a guy. Uh, he had been on the boats three times to get into Gaza and he was on the Gaza Freedom March. He's been in Israeli prisons about three times through trying to get through Jordan. Uh, just going in, saying you want to go to Palestine, the same thing as people here. He's been out on the fishing boats uh, with the Palestinians who are regularly getting shot, killed, have their boats taken away and destroying the fishing industry. And uh, there he was actually abducted, like the Palestinians were held in an Israeli prison. They had a hunger strike for three weeks. Uh, he was beaten up badly, as well as uh, he was actually... Um, they, they, they sort of held him in isolation over there as well. And um, he's been writing and videoing and making so much uh, awareness around the southern part of, uh, of Europe for, for about 10 years. Um, but it's not really a, as much as it is you know, a part of it, his huge workload in terms of fighting for the Palestinian cause and anybody who's had it tougher than he has. It was also his wonderful, indomitable spirit. And I can say with sincerity that other people here have that wonderful, indomitable spirit of love for other people around them and care for the first person they meet to try and make their day and their life a little bit better. And, uh, and I think everybody should be proud today. And I think that uh, Vic would be very, very proud to see such a wonderful effort and he would be more and more confident now that, that things, the tide is changing and that, that Palestine will be free. Uh, so I think that uh, we should all hold our heads up high after today and also spare a thought for Vic, but not only that, but spare a thought for the amount of courage from Palestinians. What have we faced today? We face people telling us to move on and uh, getting a bit impatient. What have Palestinians faced looking for the same liberties? They face death, they face their houses being knocked down, they face loss of loved ones, they face loss of their entire livelihoods and cultures. Okay, so that is the, the, the level of, uh, that is the stakes that they're facing when they try and have the kind of liberties that we're looking for today. But I just want everyone to spare a thought for Victoria and the others who have died in the name of freedom and justice and freedom for Palestine. Thanks a lot. Stay human! Stay human! Stay human! Stay human! Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, just wanted to uh, give you greetings from the United States. Uh, there's only one of me here today, but uh, hoping for more in the future. Um, just want to say a little bit about what's going on in the United States. Um, I think uh, I've been involved in Palestine Solidarity for nearly 12 years, which is as long as I've been an activist for for anything. Um, and we're, the movement there is not as strong as it is in some other countries, but I can say in the 12 years that I've been working on it, I've seen a total sea change, particularly among young people. The Lebanon War in 2006, and particularly the Gaza War um, in 2009, um, just more and more young people um, are questioning the total lies that we get told um, about uh, what Israel is and is not. Um, just within the, the past year, uh, Students for Justice in Palestine, which is a national uh, student organization, they had their first national conference. There were 350 people, and they had to turn away a 
another 200 people who tried to register. Uh, because they, they would have had them all, but the um, university where it was hosted were threatening to kick them out of the space uh, if they let in everyone who wanted to come. Um, also this year uh, at uh, Penn State, uh, there was the first ever uh, national conference on boycott, divestment, and sanctions. Um, also several hundred, three or four hundred people, and they also had hundreds of people who wanted to attend uh, that they had to turn away for exactly the same reason. Um, the university uh, threatened, the university president actually wrote an op-ed against the conference. Uh, the organizers persisted and they still held the conference there and it was a massive success. Um, so I think we're taking great steps forward um, and we're still organizing. Uh, the newest campaign in New York City, where I'm from, is that um, Technion University, oh, yeah. uh, Israeli university develop, you know, responsible for the development of uh, drones and all kinds of surveillance technology and high-tech, the high-tech aspects of the occupation. They want to build um, a massive joint campus with Cornell University Ooh. on an island in the East River <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> uh, in, in New York City. Um, and we have no uh, doubt that not only will this uh, be used to de further develop technology for Israel, but that that technology is going to come back to police departments in the United States, in the UK, and many places in the world. Um, so our latest campaign is trying to um, fight to raise awareness about that and what Technion is, and that it's not a neutral academic institution, that it's part of the occupation, and to build a campaign to stop that, camp that, that uh, campus from being built. Um, so uh, it's great to be out here, and free Palestine. Thank you for your patience again. Um, spoken to yet to, got a copy of the letter for those people that uh, need them. They have to, they've reviewed the policy, is what they're saying, and it's all laid out in there with regards to refunds, and on this occasion they will refund. It's set out within that. Are there any other issues regarding any other costs that you've incurred, things like that, and you'll need to direct them to the customer services, which the address is also on the letter that's available here. If you just want to get hold of those, and then that should answer all the questions that you need. So, they, um, I think you should give them out one. one sorry, one. Are, they, are they not coming? Are, are the uh, Jet2 no. not coming? No, Jet2 aren't coming. That's the letter that they've printed. That's their position on it. If there's any other issues... I've you to do it at public yes. expense. Yes. Oh, that's great, isn't it? It's it's the time it, it, was, it was deemed that it would be the most efficient way to obviously... Because obviously it's cold, and I'm sure and somebody will want to get home. Like no, and they're afraid to talk to us, basically, is what you're saying. They were supposed to warm in Palestine, but they wouldn't let us go there. Okay. If you, those who want the letters can uh, get them there. You need to call the names. Call the names. Oh. Is it a new customer? I'm not, I'm not yet to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>